Charles Lindbergh, seen with his mother, undertook aviation's most memorable flight in 1927. Ordering out his plane on a chilly May morning, the young airmail pilot announced his intention of flying from New York to Paris alone. With the spirit of St. Louis groaning under a tremendous fuel load, he barely cleared the power lines at the edge of the field. An excited throng surged over Le Bourget Airport in Paris, wildly cheering America's lone eagle. He had completed his historic 3,600-mile flight in 34 hours. On his return to America, New York gave Lindy a welcome that has never been equaled in the city's history. Amid a blizzard of ticker tape, New Yorkers poured out their admiration and affection for a quiet hero whose solo flight led the way for the thousands of routine crossings that were to follow. This day, the world belonged to Lucky Lindy. In 1928, Sir Hubert Wilkins soared over the top of the world on the first transarctic flight from Alaska to Spitsbergen. A reception committee awaited them, Eskimo youngsters. The late 20s produced the endurance flyers. Although refueling in midair was a hazardous task, some of them managed to remain aloft for weeks. Amelia Earhart. Proving women could match men in skill and daring, crossed the Atlantic alone in 1932. As they had Lindbergh, New Yorkers took Lady Lindy to their hearts. Wiley Post, too, after completing the first solo flight around the world, received the city's acclaim. World War II proved the military importance of air power. While aviation had played a minor role in 1918, supremacy in the skies was to become the key to allied victory. Wave after wave of bombers roared across the channel, battling on their way the enemy aircraft that darted after them like deadly wasps. Rumbling on, the giant ships dropped their cargoes of devastation. gave birth to low-level bombers, winging over the ramparts of fortress Europe and on across the countryside, they droned relentlessly toward their targets. In both Europe and the Pacific, Allied airmen punished the opposition with precision from in close. bombers carried out their dangerous missions, crippling the Axis nerve centers, proving in the garish glare of bursting bombs that the airplane, as a weapon of destruction, was awesomely effective. With war's end, propeller-driven aircraft yielded to jet-powered planes. Restless man had found a revolutionary new means of streaking still faster, higher, and farther. Inside a B-29, one day in 1953, Captain Charles Yeager, first man to break through the sound barrier, slid into a rocket-powered XS-1 snuggled against the mother plane. Dropping away under its own power, the skyrocket is soon plunging earthward at almost 1,400 miles an hour, twice the speed of sound, a world record. Refueled four times in flight, a B-50 has circled the globe non-stop. The Azores were first, Saudi Arabia next, and the Philippines third. A final refueling over Hawaii, then home again to Fort Worth. In an ever-shrinking world, the newest jet aircraft, like those used during the Korean War, are graphic evidence of the ambition, skill, and high courage with which man has pursued his journey toward the stars. Yes, we have come far since the Wright brothers' first flight at Kitty Hawk. Yet the future holds still many new challenges. Where now? What next in man's conquest of the skies?